I am um, panicked a little bit. Um, this is it, you, you win or you learn, so. You win or you learn, that's what they say, but easy to say in theory, but way harder to actually take this to heart. Losing sucks, and even if you do learn from mistakes, it comes with an unhealthy serving of shame and regret. In other sports, you can point fingers and make yourself feel better, but in mixed martial arts, you're alone in the cage, and any attempt to shift the blame of the loss will be thrown right back at you with a whole bunch of backlash. If you stack a bunch of big losses together, guess what else comes with a bunch of big losses? A massive victory only and only if you know how to handle a loss. Take the loss on the chin and stop making excuses, they say. But again, easier said than done. It's one thing to lose in a sporting contest. Feels bad, but you can live with it. It's a whole different pain when you lose a fight. Can you really blame them? When you walk out of the octagon victorious, media obligations don't sound as terrible as they did when you were cutting weight and prepping for the fight. The media members in the press conference are ready to sing your praises, and as soon as they are done with the life questions, they'll hop onto their websites and continue singing the praises of the winner. And it makes sense. People want to read about winners, not losers. Point is, there is that massive of a recognition for the first place person. It's not a hundred times more. It's not a thousand times more. It's millions and time millions times more than a second place person. Articles written about the victor will net far more clicks and the folks who don't have media credentials will chase you around the backstage arena, begging for an exclusive interview because your face, the winning face, will generate a lot more views than anything else that night. Most importantly, the comments under those articles and videos will be something like this. He was good. He was great. He might become the champion. He's already the uncrowned champion, actually. Uh, guys, he is the GOAT. All that is nice and all love and praise from the people in the community, but internally, you feel relief. Everything in the past couple of months was not a gigantic waste of time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears because this victory made those grueling sparring sessions, training routines, and self-torture practices worth it. Meanwhile, the other guy. Fuck! Fuck! Motherfuck! Fuck! I lost, and it sucks. You know, I, I know I'm better than that. Unless horribly damaged or concussed, the loser of the fight is expected to show up at the same press conference and face the heat. Everything said prior will be used against them. The media members will sprinkle salt on the fresh wounds, and you just know that one of them, or hell, most of them, are going to cook up a half-assed article, probably AI made, and the main picture will be you hanging your head in defeat. That sounds like a lot of shit to crawl through, especially for someone who just lost. Some fighters show up on time, obviously heartbroken, but they remain gracious in defeat. I'm fine. You know, losing happens, every great champion loses. Um, I, I've lost before, you know, and if I dumb, I lose in the gym, so I'm fine. I'm more upset about the injuries, but other than that, I'm okay. They present no ifs or buts or coulda, woulda, shoulda. Dominic, obviously a tough night for you tonight. Um, what was tough about it? Walking away at the loss, of course. Loss is part of life. If you don't have loss, you don't grow. This isn't tough, this is life. They simply offer their respects to the guy who beat them fairly and promise that they will be back. You know, I know I lost and um, John won. That's pretty much all it boils down to. It doesn't matter if it's closer or if it's, if, it's, if it's not. You know, he won the fight. Yeah, I mean, listen, things like that happen in your career and I went 10 years without getting rocked or getting hurt or really everything went my way for a decade. Um, so. I mean, sometimes shit doesn't go your way, and that's it. That's the comparatively good ending to an awful week. A good and rare ending. Most of the time, they start unraveling. Yeah, now, Dustin, you can celebrate that illegitimate win all you want, but you've done nothing in there. This is mortal now. Nobody will stop me. Nobody can stop me. I want my rematch. Forget about money and position for a moment. Unlike the winner, every ounce of effort they put in was a waste of time. Every question from the media feels like a punch to the gut. Initially, they attempt to be gracious and keep it cool, but after listening to half a dozen questions about what went wrong, self-control slips, and they begin with the excuses. I am the better fighter out there. You know, he was able to capitalize on a, a low left hand, a right hook. Um, you know, that, you know, hats off to TJ. You know, he battled back. Uh, you know, from losing his title and he was a hungry man, but I, I still am the better fighter in there and I'll show that in the rematch. 
Maybe excuse is too strong of a word here. Maybe something did go wrong in the training camp, an injury or just a horrendous weight cut impacted their health and ability to perform, but a post-fight press conference is hardly the time to reveal what went wrong in training camp. As sad as it is to say, people, fans and media members give little thought and zero leeway to the loser of a recent fistfight. Every time I was grabbing Sean, he was like grabbing a fish out of the water, he was just like boom. And maybe he, maybe he didn't attempt it too, but he was extremely greasy on his hair. And I, that's why when I heard him at the, at the end of the run, I grabbed his head, that made a slip. All my knees is slipped by really close. Whatever excuse they offer will be dismissed. Fans will be outraged at the classless acts and disrespect, the lack of martial arts integrity, and some of the fan base will turn on them. By the time they walk off the stage, they've done some damage to their reputation, but by letting it out in front of the world, they feel just a tiny bit better. Cope is somewhat successful, and some fans rally behind them. Maybe there is some truth to the injury claim as they did not look the same. Reading a single comment that agrees with them gives the heartbroken fighter some respite. And a few weeks later, the MMA world has pretty much forgotten the minor display of denial. But then you have more extreme cases. Not understandable denial, but pure delusion. Like this girl's already honestly, yeah. Honestly, I think I could beat them all boxing too. Really? To be honest. Sounds crazy in hindsight, but in 2015, Ronda Rousey seemed bigger than Conor McGregor. She was some sort of cultural icon, a mega draw, and Dana White's best friend. You had actual experts swearing that she would defeat Floyd Mayweather and half of the top bantamweights at UFC 193. She faced former boxing champion Holly Holm, and Lord knows a victory would have led to Joe Rogan calling her the pound for pound greatest boxer ever, but Holm pulled off the greatest upsets in women's MMA history, and Ronda Rousey was never the same again. How you doing? How, how you feel, Ronda? How do you feel? How do you feel, Ronda? From that to this. I really do believe I'm, I'm still undefeated because being defeated is a choice. Everybody has losses in their life, but I choose to always be undefeated. When you are this close to achieving something great and you fail, the breakdown extends beyond mere denial. When TJ Dillashaw faced Henry Cejudo for the flyweight title, he was already considered one of the greatest bantamweights of all time, and a second belt was going to leave no doubt. He hasn't uh, dealt with my movement. He hasn't dealt with me mixing it up. I'm going to knock out Henry Cejudo. I'll take that belt. He's been begging me to take that belt off his shoulder. It's too much weight for him. You know, that gold medal's light. <laughs> this UFC belt's got a lot more, lot more weight to it. I'm going to take it right off his shoulder. He amped the trash dog, the arrogance, the stakes, and when Henry Cejudo knocked him out in the first, TJ amazingly talked his way into the Ronda Rousey zone. Congratulations, Henry Cejudo. Awesome. Great job, man. Awesome. You know, but you did not win. You did not win this fight. Um, I am happy to accept defeat, but I did not I did not lose. This is the absolute worst way to handle a loss. You don't just disgrace yourself in front of the entire world. You disrespect the other fighter who shared the octagon with you just an hour ago. Despite empirical evidence to the contrary, the total outclass and skill and the defeat in front of thousands of people in the arena, the fighter lashes out, blames his team, the officials, the system, all in a sad attempt to salvage their pride. But it almost always backfires and ruins their reputation and credibility for good. Blinded by the feet and crushed by broken expectations, they yell and scream in hopes that someone, anyone can share the burden of defeat, but they keep yelling and people start walking away, labeling them an utter disgrace to the sport. This is not what you call a loss, it's a humiliating defeat in every sense of the word, and the sad part is, you inflict it upon yourself. When you, how do you deal with losing in life? You learn from your mistakes, you move on, you don't dwell. It's the same thing as jujitsu. You study your weaknesses, you figure out what you can do, you fix those problems, you move forward. You don't dwell in the past. That's it. Yeah, those. Got beat, good. Unless you are Habib Nurmagomedov or John Jones, you will taste defeat at least once in your career. You will listen to Bruce Buffer announcing your arrival as the victor, and you will have to face the media and endure the mean comments on your social media. Unless you're Ian Gary and you simply block everything. Kidding aside, Silence and a little class, even forced, goes a long way in calming down the impending hatred. It's not just MMA. Winners are celebrated while the losers are vilified. But be gracious in defeat, and while you may not win in the octagon as a fighter, you win the respect of the wider community as a human.
get YouTube SEO masterclass, editing, breakdowns, all previous and upcoming videos, music, playlists, downloadable thumbnails, your name in these wonderful credits, and so much more on Patreon. Have a look at it right here. And with that being said, I got to bounce. I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.